Sometimes you'll be asked to solve for the percent composition of a chemical compound. This will allow you to understand its chemical makeup, its overall chemistry, and all its physical properties much better. Finding percent composition is like understanding parts of a whole. So for example, if I have 10 boys and 30 girls, and you're asked to find the percentage of boys, you would first find the total, which is 40. Next, you would then divide the number of boys by the total. So if you go 10 divided by 40, you would have 25% are boys. The other 75%, because it's parts of a whole, has to be girls. So the percent composition of chemical compounds is no different from that idea. So for example, if you wanted to find the percent composition of water, you would take 2, which is the mass of hydrogen, divided by 18, which is the total mass of water. You would then get 11% is hydrogen, and the other 89% is oxygen by mass. Let's see an example here where you're asked to find the percent by mass of each element in calcium chloride. So it's percent composition. You first need to come up with a formula for calcium chloride. So calcium is plus 2, chlorine is negative 1, crisscross the charges, just like how we learned in the chapter 8 playlist. Cross the 2 over, cross the 1 down, write down what you see. So it's CaCl2, which is the formula for calcium chloride. At this point, I need to determine a total mass for calcium chloride. So 40.08 is the atomic mass of calcium and we're going to add that to two chlorines, each weighing 35.45 grams apiece. So this is how we find the total, 40.08 plus, and chlorine contributes 70.9. So our total mass for this compound is 110.98 grams per mole. So now you take 40.08 and this is to find the percentage of calcium. 40.08 divided by the total, which is 110.98. And we're gonna get 36.11% is calcium. Chlorine makes up 70.9 in this compound, and we're gonna divide that by 110.98, leaving us with 63.89%. So those are the percentages of calcium and chlorine in calcium chloride, and that is known as percent composition. So now I will get into empirical formula, and it might seem like I'm getting off course because we were just covering percent composition, but you're gonna see that it actually plays a role in your understanding of this new topic here, which is called empirical formulas. So to give you an understanding or a basic illustration of what empirical formulas are, it's just your simplified ratio of your molecular formula. So just take glucose, for example. The molecular formula for glucose is C6H12O6. The simplified ratio of that would be CH2O, and that is known as the empirical formula of glucose. In this example here, we're looking at benzene, which has the formula C6H6. So a 6 to 6 ratio simplifies to 1 to 1, so the molecular formula is C6H6, but the empirical formula is just CH. I'll give you an overview on how most of these problems look when you're being asked to solve for the empirical formula. So typically you're given the percent composition, and there are four steps that I've outlined in a rhyme that you can remember so that you can solve these types of problems. So it goes like this, percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by small, multiply to a whole. So I'll demonstrate this rhyme in problem number 46, and we'll work out this problem together. Number 46, a blue solid is found to contain 36.84% nitrogen and 63.16% oxygen. What is the empirical formula for this solid? So we're going to use the rhyme that I have above my head, and we're going to try to make sense of this problem, and we're going to figure out the empirical formula. So first, we're going to write down 36.84, and we're going to change percent to mass, right? So replace the percent sign with G, which stands for grams. So that is the first part of the rhyme, percent to mass. Next is mass to moles. So we are going to convert grams to moles. We've done this before in parts one and two of this series. So the molar mass of nitrogen is 14. Do the same for oxygen, okay? So the mole of oxygen should go on top. 
And if you look on the periodic table, the mass of oxygen is 16. These will cross cancel. Okay, so get your calculator and crunch these numbers. 36.84 divided by 14. Okay, and we're going to get 2.63 for nitrogen, 2.63 moles, and we're going to get 3.94 moles for oxygen. Okay, so the next part of the rhyme is called divide by small. So I look at my set of numbers and I realize 2.63 is the smallest. So I'm going to divide both of them by 2.63, and we're left with 1 and 1.5. And the next step says multiply to a whole. So we will start at 2. And if 2 doesn't give us a set of whole numbers, we're going to work our way up to 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. But it looks to me like 2 will work. So 2 will yield 2 nitrogens and 3 oxygens, Okay, because 1.5 times 2 gets you 3. So the empirical formula is N2O3. An easy way to check your work for empirical formula is by working backwards and finding out what the percent composition is. So we found that our empirical formula is N2O3. We can then find a total and then divide each of the elements composition into that total to get our percentages. This is a molecular formula problem. Number 51 reads, analysis of a chemical used in photographic developing fluid indicates a chemical composition of 65.45% carbon. 5.45% hydrogen and 29.09% oxygen. The molar mass is found to be 110 grams per mole. Determine the molecular formula. So molecular formula, you just need to take one more step in addition to what you did for the empirical formula. So I'll explain once we get there. But first, let's carry out the first part of our rhyme, percent to mass. So change all the percent symbols to grams. So that's what I'm doing there for carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Time sign draw a line for each of these three elements. And now the second part of the rhyme is mass to moles. So one mole of carbon over 12 grams of carbon, and that's the molar mass, which you can find on the periodic table. We'll crunch the numbers later. We're going to come back to it. So one mole of hydrogen over one gram of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen is equal to 16 grams of oxygen. So we need a calculator for this. We're going to cancel out these units and we're going to crunch these numbers. So 65.45 divided by 12 will give you 5.45 moles of carbon. Do the same for hydrogen, 5.45, and oxygen is 1.82. The next step of the rhyme is divide by small. So the smallest number in this set is 1.82. Divide each number by 1.82. And let's see what we get. So for carbon, we're going to need three carbons, three hydrogens, and one oxygen. So the empirical formula is C3H3. O1. But we're being asked to find the molecular formula. So there is one additional step where we're going to take n, which is a ratio, times the empirical formula. So I will explain what n is, and n is the ratio between the mass of the molecular formula divided by the mass of the empirical formula. So we were told earlier in the problem that the molecular mass of this compound was 110. The empirical formula, the empirical mass is three carbons, which weighs 36. Your hydrogens weigh three in total, and your one oxygen weighs 16. So you add that all up, the empirical mass is 55. So your ratio N will always be a whole number. And in this case, the whole number is two. So we have now found n, n is 2, and we're going to multiply this by the empirical formula. 
So 2 times C3 H3 O1. It's the distributive property of math. So that 2 distributes to everything, every single one of the subscripts, and we get a molecular mass of C6 H6 O2. And of course, you can always check your answers and confirm that your molecular formula is correct. So you were told that the mass of this thing is 110 grams per mole. So six carbons, each weighing 12, six hydrogens, each weighing one, and two oxygens, each weighing 16. So when you add this all up, okay, 12 times six is 72, plus six, plus 32, you are gonna get 110 grams per mole. So that confirms that you're doing this problem correctly. So you found out what the molecular formula is, which is C6H6O2, and when you found its molar mass, it was 110, which was provided to you in the problem. All right, guys, I hope you understand the relationship between percent composition and empirical formulas and molecular formulas. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Wind Chemistry.